With a hawkish Fed minutes report and no clear indications for a rate hike pause on the next run, the retracement currently faced is quintessential for an upside run. The bi-daily time frame has exposed our floor and I believe we can validate within this session. Welcome back on this update Wednesday. This is Arca and let's dive into ticker symbol ASRE. Let's kill him team. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for coming by once again. Let's go ahead and look at ASRE first in the five-day time frame. Please notice here that this is the Gaussian band, and we apparently are on our way to test the bottom side of this band, or actually, which would be the newly converted resistance into now a support before a continuation onto the upside. I must say that this thirty that this thirty-six cent target that we've been lingering around has been absolutely strong, but I do suspect that we may actually flash down to the area to to a lower area here, particularly the bottom side of this range to see if we can get a launch from that zone. Right now, the 36 is located right near the uh, the closing of this green candle, right? I'm saying green because when you, you know, when you take out that, <laughs> when you take out the Gaussian bands, it is a green a candle, right? So yeah, I, I do believe that we could be facing a downside here, all right? But we have to validate the target. First of all, let's take a look at this right over here. The SMA 55 is located at 3206. Right, three day time frame would actually create a pretty nice bull flag and one that uh, one that uh, uh, our analyst off grid gorilla talked about. Right, so I, al I also talked about this too being part of a actually a, a very complex upside uh formation, and uh, I, I actually called it a quad formation breakout or a tri formation breakout in this case. In a three day time frame, you can actually see this. Uh, that that it would be an, actually a buy formation breakout since it is a bull flag, and uh, it would con it would continue to the upside based on this hammer candle, an inverse hammer candle after a downtrend, right? So we would get one more candle to the downside to the to the EMA 55 located at 3206 before a continuation to the upside. Please take a look at the Gaussian bands located right down here at 320, I think 04. Right, so pretty much rhyming within that target as well on the EMA 55 three day time frame. This is the Gaussian band's five day time frame. So let's move on to the next uh, thing here. And I would like for you to notice that there is an imbalance here, right? In other words, it would be the, uh, the uh, ICT's SMC concept, right? It would be smart money concepts. And that bottom side right over here would be the inflection zone. And it's located at where? 32. All right. So in fact, is it 32 dead on? Yeah. So 32 is is rhyming heavily here. And usually these types of uh, imbalances in price or fair value gaps tend to work as a pretty nice support area before a continuation to the upside. I would say that I did I did talk about this 32 cent target as being our invalidation zone zone. And if you know me well enough, if you watch this channel often, you know that I find the best entries at invalidation zones okay team so the, it is rhyming very nicely let's go ahead and move on to the next uh chart and see what we have okay upon a pullback here to that 32 cent zone uh let's see let's see which let me see if the bottom of this candle here that is located at 33 on this candle here so let's see if we can just move ever so slightly to the downside and see if it's hard to catch it here because it's such a large time frame yeah i mean it's barely barely there okay so it's just just literally a cent below this uh wick low of this uh, candle here this bi-monthly candle okay from september 2022 all right so now upon getting that pullback right i mean it would be such a small pullback here right before an upside continuation we could be seeing a reversion a, a mean reversion play here on the bi-monthly specifically to the target of around 59 cents or just shy of 60 cents right so i want i want you to keep i want you to keep that in mind right because that would be uh that would be a pretty nice area for us to evaluate right so now looking for upside targets here let me see if i had any fib levels already drawn within the uh yeah with, with within this uh chart here okay nothing nothing there i believe i may have had them right over here let's see 
Uh, and if not, then yeah, let's just go ahead and draw in some new fib levels so that we can see what uh, could be in line for us, right? So, uh, oh, right, we, we have a statistical setup. Oh, team, I forgot to tell you, of course, right? I forgot to tell you that the uh, five-day closure uh, has happened. This is the new five day, right? And it's now uh, move, making its move down, which is uh, usually it's typical, right? For the price action to break up side of a critical resistance and then come back and test the resistance into support before continuing before continuing onwards, right? So it is it is uh, it is pretty important that we do get that downside, which uh, also has some rhyming with the one spot two seven two, which is literally the September two thousand twenty two wick low as well at thirty three. So lots of rhyming within that target there, 33 to 32, specifically 32 more so than not. Okay, team. So, uh, but what I wanted to mention here is that we are still increasing volatility and we are still suggesting an upside uh, posture here in, uh, in momentum. So that actually, let me just go ahead and undo that. So that actually has led us to a back test, right? I've, I've taken note of that iterations upside thrust, the duration of the iteration and the amount of times that the uh, the the uh, profile of volatility versus momentum have guessed the upside correctly versus incorrectly. So in this case, we have seven out of seven times proving the uh, proving the profile 100% accurate with an upside thrust of about 435 spot 88%, aka the mean, over the span of just over 21 days. Now, the standard deviation from this 435 spot 88% upside is 875 spots 17% uh, with an upper bound of the first standard deviation. If you are familiar with statistics, it's the bell curve landing at about 1300%. That 1300% is very curious because it is marking the top side of the Gaussian bands. And not only that, it is also marking the uh, two spot 618 at 131 Right. So there's a lot of uh, confluence happening within these targets there. So I am I am saying that it is possible that we can make a pretty substantial run to the upside here based on that move. Right. So now if we are facing further targets, I, I, I couldn't. I mean, I guess. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess if I if I am looking for let's just say like some ridiculous like upside targets right i'm not sure that we can get to them but there are some pretty uh uh some pre pre uh, pretty clear indications that we can reach it. i mean let's see this what, what like what is this down here yeah so I, I i do think that we can reach uh let's see oh my goodness that is just so heavy that is big time upside here I'd say around six. I mean, I just remember that I'm I'm not a I'm not saying that we're gonna go there. I would really like for us to touch down into the into the one dollar and thirty one cent zone first, but uh, six eighty seven to seven sixty could be a top side resistance here. I'm not sure that we can beat the double digits, but it is uh, the four spot six one eight at ten fifteen, and it is uh, highly confluent too. All right, so yeah, for now, I guess we can uh, just speculate on that uh, 760 top to about the 687 bottom at the four spot 236. All right, team, so it is geometrically figured. It is there, and uh, it could honestly be supported with a massive five-day volatility expansion, right? So, that, I mean, this would be very powerful, and it would be a continuous price action, applying FOMO of all kinds, not sure how that would happen, but we do have massive, a massive increase in volume here in the macro time frame. So, yeah, I mean, if that is the case, uh, I guess, you know, I guess we are facing some shorts here, right? It, it is said that the Kramers are short the ASRE asset, which probably would affect uh, FNGR and GTII as well in a positive manner. So yeah, I, I am looking at the closer time frame for uh, first though. And I would like to see, I mean, it's going to be very tough for us to, uh, you know, break beneath that 36 cent zone, but we're right at it right now. But uh, you heard it here first. If we do make that downside move, expect a bounce from that area of about 32 cents to 33 cents uh, coming in in the next session or two. Uh, and uh, the RSI is actually indicative of that, right? So now the bi-daily timeframe signal that's giving it away 
is right here. So the space between the RSI signal and the SMA14 is the space that I'm looking at as the correlation between the 3206 bottom or 32 uh, and, and the SMA14. First of all, the SMA, the SMA14 would be located in the gravitational zone of the bull weakness percentile. And this would essentially find support. The RSI signal would find support from that gravitational zone and the SMA14, thus pressuring this to the upside and then correcting everything from there. Okay, team. So, yeah, we are still looking at some downside here. And this is why I'm saying that the, it, is a, it is of higher probability that we can't touch that $0.32 cent zone. Not financial advice. I will load the bags. <laughs> right? So, let's just go ahead and leave it like that team please take whatever i do show and iterate within these videos as just a form of entertainment as i cannot suggest for you to buy sell or hold any assets whatsoever i need you to do your own due diligence and everything will be cool cool but with that said team i wish you well a very very good night stop by the live stream tomorrow but yeah i'll catch you at the bell manana adios Yeah.